Hello, I welcome you all in this course on power plant engineering. Today we will discuss about the gas turbines. Des gas turbine is uh, another uh, uh, machine which can produce power in a thermal power plant. The gas turbine, in gas turbine as it is clear from the name itself, only gas is used for the generation of power. So, there is no phase change in gas turbines. Okay? And the entire power is generated by heating the gas. Now, gas can be heated either in a constant volume process or constant pressure process. Right? So, there are two different cycles, Joule cycle where we are doing heating at a constant pressure, there is an Atkinson cycle where heating is being done at a, a constant volume. In gas turbines, if you look, if you compare the cycles, say steam turbine works on Rankine cycle. Right, and we have amply discussed the Rankine cycle in previous lectures. Uh, state 1 to 2 is expansion, 2 to 3 is condensation, then 3 to 2 to 3, this is not 3, 4 is uh, compression in the pump or pumping, and 4 to 1 the process takes place in the boiler. So, here all the processes they take place in uh, separate entities. For example, expansion in a turbine, 2 to 3 is condensation in a condenser, 3 to 4 there is a pumping house for pumping the water and 4 to 1 there is separate boiler for generating steam. So, this is a Rankine cycle and in gas turbine cycle, uh, if you draw on temperature entropy diagram. So, there are two types of cycles, one is a joule cycle where heat is added at high pressure and high temperature. Right. So, first of all the gas is pressurized, so I will draw two constant pressure lines. So, first of all the gas is heated from state 1 to state 2, right. I am just drawing the ideal cycle, right. When we attain the gas out of the state 2, let us take air, let us discuss about the air standard cycle, okay. air standard gas turbine cycle. So, 1 to 2 and then 2 to 3 is constant, this is pressure is equal to constant, these are constant pressure lines. So, 2 to 3 process takes place <laughs> where at high pressure heat is added. So, there is an addition of heat. Now, after reaching state 3, the expansion takes place in a gas turbine. So, this is gas turbine where the expansion of the uh, high hot gases takes place and we get 3 to 4. At the and this goes to the air, if it is open cycle, if it is closed cycle, in a cooler it is cooled to 1 and then again uh, this process continues. Now, this is known as a Joule cycle, Joule's uh, uh, and Britain cycle, Joule's Britain cycle. Now, if in, in, in spite of adding heat as constant pressure, if we add heat as constant temperature, sorry, the constant volume. Uh, so, the constant pressure and if we add the heat at the constant volume, we will draw, it will not be clear here, if we draw on PV diagram. Now, if we draw PV diagram Joule cycle, it will be more clear here. So, Joule cycle will be something like this. This is compression 1 to 2, process 2 to 3 is constant pressure heat addition. 3 to 4 is isentropic process where power we gain the power output and 4 to 1 when subcooler is required otherwise this will go to the air. Now, if you look at the Atkinson cycle on PV diagram, uh, Atkinson cycle on PV diagram, okay, the compression process will remain same 1 to 2. Now, heat addition will be at constant volume. And after heat addition, rest of the process is remaining same. This is 3 and this is 4. But most of the gas turbine power plants, they work on <coughs> uh, Joules-Britten cycle. right? So, Joules-Britten cycle has four components. One is gas turbine. Number two, it has uh, uh, compressor. Number 3, it has combustion chamber. So, it is an external combustion engine also, combustion chamber, 
where combustion of uh, fuel takes place and if there is a close cycle then it can be a cooler also cooler provided here to cool the gas we do not call it condenser because there is no phase change so instead of calling condenser it is called cooler right <coughs> so this is joule britain britain cycle this is atkinson cycle this is atkinson cycle this is joule britain cycle now we can classify the gas turbines because there are number of uh, different uh, different gas turbines with different arrangements right so on the basis of combustion process we have already classified one is joules working on the joule cycle another is working on the uh, atkinson cycle on the basis of expansion also impulse and impulse reaction the turbine we cannot always classify the power is generated by impulse action only and power is generated by uh, impulse reaction type of turbine now the next one uh, we can have classification like open turbine closed turbine and there is a semi closed turbine also so if there are number of uh, expansion turbines so one turbine is closed and another turbine is open so we call it semi closed turbine semi closed type of uh, cycle right direction of flow in direction of flow is the radial and axial axial direction uh, and radial direction normally we have gas turbines which which have uh, movement of the fluid in axial direction now simple cycle of gas turbine i have already explained you now we will go for the efficiency of the turbine now if uh, suppose we draw on temperature entropy diagram 1 2 3 and 4 right so work output work of the turbine is cp T3 minus T4. Pressure is not constant. It can always be asked when pressure is not constant why we are taking Cp. The reason being if we look at the work done in a in an adiabatic process, suppose process is 1 to 2, right. So, work done in adiabatic process is going to be P1 V1 minus P2 V2. Uh, n upon n minus 1 or gamma if it is adiabatic process then it is going to be the gamma over gamma minus 1 right. Now, P1 V1 can always write R T1 minus T2 gamma over gamma minus 1. This R gamma over gamma minus 1 will constitute Cp. It is not a constant pressure process, but while driving the final uh, expression we happen to get the value of Cp. Now, the Cp should not change in expansion process, it is assumption, but Cp also changes with temperature, but here we will assume that Cp does not change uh, with uh, in ex during expansion process. So, work of the turbine is process 3 to 4, work of the compressor because part of this work will be consumed by the compressors, because in gas turbines the mass flow rate for maintaining the same mass flow rate, high bulk of fluid will be required because it is gas. In a steam turbine, we are dealing with the water. We are simply pumping the water, right? Here we are dealing with the gas. So, if we condense one uh, uh, cubic meter of uh, uh, this water vapor, the volume will be reduced by 1500 times or 1200 times. So, a small pump can handle sufficient amount of water, but here we are dealing with the gas. So, that is why. Uh, compressors ready this uh, centrifugal and axial two types of compressors are used in a gas turbine one is axial compressor another is centrifugal compressor when bulk of the fluid has to be handled which is uh, high quantity is high then we go for uh, axial type of uh, compressors and these compressors they consume sufficient amount of energy so, it cannot be neglected in Rankine cycle some of the time we neglect the pump were consumed by the pumps because it is a few kilowatts 
right but here substantial amount of output is consumed by the for for is consumed for pumping the gas so or in other words we can say that the work ratio of gas turbine cycle is less than the steam turbine cycle so here we can say cp again it is t2 minus t1 right heat supplied is cp t3 minus t2 this is constant pressure process t3 minus t2 right so efficiency is going to be work turbine minus work of the compressor divided by q and then it is going to be equal to uh, cp will cancel out in denominator denominator and numerator so this is t4 minus sorry t3 minus t4 minus t2 minus t1 divided by t3 minus t2 we can rearrange this t3 minus t2 minus t4 minus t1 divided by t3 minus t2 or it is 1 minus t4 minus t1 divided by t3 minus t2 now here again i'll write efficiency is equal to 1 minus t4 minus t1 divided by t3 minus t2 now here if you look at this is pressure ratio rp rp is p2 by p1 is equal to t2 by t1 or we can say is raised to power gamma over minus 1 over gamma is equal to t2 by t1 and in the same way it is t3 by t4 so here what we can do t2 minus t1 t2 by t1 is equal to t3 by t4 so or t4 by t1 is equal to t3 by t2 t4 by t1 minus 1 is equal to t3 by t2 minus 1 or t4 minus t1 divided by t1 is equal to t3 minus t2 by t2 so t4 minus t1 divided by t3 minus t2 is going to be 1 minus t2 by t1 or is 1 minus 1 over r pressure ratio gamma over minus over gamma right now here if we increase the pressure ratio efficiency will increase thermal efficiency will increase in ideal cycle thermal efficiency is not dependent upon the highest temperature it is dependent only t2 and t1 only so pressure at the inlet and outlet of compressor if it is an ideal cycle second thing is it is dependent on the gamma also so if we increase the pressure ratio and if we compare the f with the efficiency the curve is going to be like this for gamma is equal to 1.414 that is for a diatomic gas instead of diatomic gas if i fill that cycle I make it a closed cycle and if i use argon the efficiency will increase because here we are getting gamma is equal to 1.67 and if we increase the value of gamma the thermal efficiency will increase so this is done in i mean closed cycle uh, gas turbine where we can fill the gas like krypton mercury or monatomic gases like mercury vapor can also be used uh, argon can also be used so monatomic gases if you are using here then we will get higher value of gamma and efficient we will get higher value of efficiency now we will come to the actual cycle because no power plant works on an ideal cycle if we look at here the actual cycle first of all compression right so what do the compression is not an ideal process because there are several losses in rotor dynamic machines like blade friction losses entry losses so due to this and loss, losses in the uh, diffusers uh, there is an increase in entropy entropy does not remain constant right and we get state 2 dash and efficiency of the compression is expressed by ideal uh, h1 h1 minus h2 divided by h1 minus h2 dash now h1 minus h2 is a change in enthalpy right again it will be cp t1 minus t2 divided by cp t1 minus t2 dash the cp will be cancelled out it will be t1 minus t2 divided by t1 minus t2 dash 
Now, after this, it goes to the combustion chamber where burning of fuel takes place. In ideal cycle, we say if 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 it's an air standard cycle, we assume that the air is being used uh, during the entire cycle. But in actual cycle, fuel is added. So suppose air fuel ratio, there is some air fuel ratio. Air fuel ratio, let us say, sixty into is to one. For one kg of air, sixty kg of air, one kg of fuel will be used. And we are assuming that the mass flow rate of the fuel in the cycle is. Uh, uh, 1 kg per second right for the sake of calculations uh, now here mass of the fuel is also added so we'll write 1 plus mf mass of the fuel second thing is in the combustion chamber also there is going to be a pressure drop because movement of fluid will not take place through the combustion chamber so there is a pressure drop in the combustion chamber in fact at, if you look at the microscopic level at the exit of the compressor there is valve so across the valve also there is a pressure drop so we are just considering only major pressure drops in the cycle so in the combustion chamber once the uh, pressure drop takes place inside the combustion chamber so we get state 3 here lower than p1 p2 right now after this expansion of gas takes place inside the turbine now for expansion because and after expansion gases have to be exhausted to the atmosphere this is atmospheric air so exhaust pressure should be a little higher than the exhaust pressure otherwise the gases will not come out of the turbine not go to the atmosphere so this is again this is p1 and p2 let us say this is p3 this is p4 expansion in a uh, tur uh, gas turbine and again this expansion is not ideal there is certain change in the entropy so we get 4 4 dash now here efficiency of the turbine is going to be t3 minus t4 dash divided by t3 minus t4 ideal output and actual output right there are other minor losses also which uh, we have not taken into the account now here heat addition q is going to be CPG. Now, here specific heat of gas will be considered while taking the total enthalpy and 1 plus mf mass of the fuel T3 minus specific heat of air uh, T2 dash. Now, here you can see though we are consuming more energy in the compression and we are getting T2 dash. But heat addition has reduced by irreversibility of in, in compressor, right? <coughs> so this pressure drop uh, in a combustion chamber is small, but beca because this mass of the fuel is also added into the air, so we cannot simply take the specific heat of the air. We have to take the specific heat of the gases, right? <coughs> Now, there is a term which is known as cycle air rate. Cycle air rate is, uh, is, is a mass of the air divided by mass of the air W divided by 3600. It means mass of the air per kilowatt hour output. How much air is required? for 1 kilowatt of output that is known as air rate and it is 3600 divided by W. W is in kilowatt, right. Now, if we look at the work of the compressor in a irreversible cycle, Right. Now, the work of the compressor is C p t 1 r raised to power gamma minus 1 over gamma minus 1 divided by efficiency of the compressor. I have just modify this. We have taken T 2 minus T 1. We have taken T 1 outside. It is T 2 by T 1 minus 1 and T 2 by T 1 is compression ratio pressure ratio gamma minus 1 over gamma minus 1 okay and work of the turbine 
वर्क ऑफ द टर्बाइन इज एफिशिएंसी ऑफ द टर्बाइन सी पी टी थ्री वन माइनस वन ओवर आर रेस टू पावर कामा आर पी कामा माइनस वन ओवर कामा वी आर टेकिंग एफिशिएंसीज इनटू द कंसिडरेशन नाउ वी विल हैव टेक डिफरेंस ऑफ दीज टू वील गेट द आउटपुट नाउ इफ यू टेक डब्लू नेट डब्लू इज इक्वल टू डब्लू टी माइनस डब्लू सी सॉरी डब्लू टी डब्लू इज इक्वल टू टर्बाइन वर्क माइनस कंप्रेसर वर्क राइट एंड दिस इज गोइंग टू इक्वल टू एफिशिएंसी ऑफ द टर्बाइन सी पी टी थ्री वन माइनस वन ओवर आर पी गामा माइनस वन ओवर गामा माइनस सी पी टी वन एफिशिएंसी ऑफ द कंप्रेसर गामा माइनस वन ओवर गामा माइनस वन Now what we want to do, we want to take W by C P T one, and let us assume efficiency is equal to one. For ideal case, efficiency can always be introduced later on. Uh, then it is going to be T uh, three by T one. Now T three by T one is maximum temperature in a cycle, ratio of maximum temperature in a cycle and minimum temperature in a cycle. That is T three by T one. So we can say it is. Denoted by T. One minus R P gamma over gamma minus one. We can always take X minus X minus one. Now here W by C P T C P is constant in a cycle. T one is also always constant. It is atmospheric temperature. It is almost constant. It does not vary much if you compare with T three. So we want to have maximum work. In order to have maximum work, we have to differentiate this with respect to x. For what value of x we are going to get the maximum work, and when we do this, we get R P is equal to optima gamma over minus one over gamma is equal to under root T. Simply, when we differentiate this, this is going to be minus T by x square plus one. That's it. If we differentiate this with respect to x, and then we can find the x is equal to under root t. That is, r raised to power gamma minus one over gamma is equal to under root t. Now, r raised to power gamma over minus gamma is equal to t two by t three, and is equal to t three by t four. Right? Now we can say that t is equal to t two by t one, t three by T four, right? And <laughs> this is uh, mm, okay. T T under root T is equal to this is equal to this. If you multiply these two, we'll get T, right? And then we know that T three by T one is equal to T. This is T. So we can say that T two by T four is equal to one. T two by T four is equal to one means T two is equal to T four. In that case, we are going to get maximum output. What does it mean? It means exhaust of the turbine, exhaust temperature of the turbine should be inlet temperature of uh, uh, combustion chamber. In that case, uh, the efficiency will be maximum. And in regeneration, we try to do that. What we in regeneration. what we try to do we just simply try to heat the exhaust of the compressor with the exhaust of the turbine so that energy can be saved we'll discuss it later on and now the issue is how to improve specific output of the turbine right so specific output of the turbine as i mentioned earlier it can be done by a regeneration in the process of regeneration this is 1 to 2 right and 3 to 4 now exhaust is quite higher than the outlet of the compressor right so with this exhaust this heated this is heated in a heat exchanger or or, or a heater and ideally this temperature should be equal to this 2 dash should be equal to 4 t4 
but actually it doesn't happen the efficiency of this type of heat air to air heat exchanger is normally 75 percent 70 to 75 percent. So, instead of getting here so we are some we land up somewhere here right. So, this is the process of regeneration it improves the output of the uh, uh, not, not output it improves the efficiency of the turbine because less amount of heat will be required for heating the system. Now, by improving turbine output by simply improving the turbine output uh, we can uh, uh, improve the uh, uh, specific output. Now, for improving the turbine output one process is reheating. When expansion is taking place it does not take place in one stage instead of that in between it, the expansion takes place in two turbines. There is one turbine, there is a heater and then this turbine exp, the exhaust of this turbine goes to another turbine and both are housed on the same shaft right. So, process 3 and this is process 4 and this is so state 4 and this is state let us say 4 dash at 4 dash this is 4 dash. Now, the ga hot gases are taken to the heater where heating takes place and then we get 4 double dash this is 4 double dash and after 4 double dash again the expansion takes place in another turbine. So, the process is like this 3 to 4 dash then 4 dash to 4 double dash 4 double dash to 4 triple dash here. So, exhaust is at a little higher temperature, but we get more output from the turbine. Another way of increasing the maximum temperature of the cycle add more heat if you increasing the maximum temperature of the cycle definitely more uh, output will be getting from the turbine. <coughs> In addition to that better fuel should be used. So, that calorific value of the fuel is high right that is how we can increase the specific. Now, for increasing the temperature we have to go for improved material right because this temperature T 3 is decided by the metallurgical limit of the turbine material. If we can anyhow we can enhance this metallurgical limit we can increase the T 3 as well. So, it is related with the metallurgy. Another thing is we can go for higher temperature if the cooling of blade this is a new technique of providing the cooling to the blades. So, inside the blades channels are made inside the blades uh, channels are made and these channels and air is circulated in these channels that is how because gas temperature we have increased right. But in anyhow if you can keep the blades cool in that case we can increase the efficiency of the turbine. So, blade cooling method, a lot of research is going on in this area of cooling of gas turbine blade so that we can enhance the efficiency of the uh, <coughs> gas turbine cycle. Now, efficiency can also be improved by reducing the compressor input. So, this is state 1 to state 2. Now, for compressor input, input reduction because we are dealing with air or or gas which has uh, very low density. In that case we can go for multi stage compression. So, instead of compressing gas in one stage after compression in one stage the gas is taken away state 1 this is state let us say 3 it is cooled to state 4 and then again it is compressed to state 5. Now, this intercooling reduces the power input and I will tell you if suppose there is a two stage intercooling and there is a perfect intercooling. Perfect intercooling means T 4 T 4 is equal to T 1 that is perfect intercooling. So, in that case the pressure ratio is going to be under root this is let us say this is P 2 this is P 1 P 1 P 2 if it is three stage intercooling we can have another stage also. In that case pressure ratio is going to be the cubic root of P 1 and P 2 and 
in this case each stage the work consumed is going to be the same. So, if you are able to calculate work consumed in one stage just multiplied by 3 you will get work consumed in 3 stages. <laughs> Sometimes water injection is also there are several methods of in intercooling it can be done through the jacketing it can be done through uh, water injection. Now, the effect of various modification on the performance of uh, simple cycles. So, addition in simple cycle and efficiency and output. Number one, if we do the regeneration, they are field data. So, efficiency is increased, regeneration efficiency is it can increase up to this is a field data increase up to 50 percent. Output improvement is not there, right, as I said earlier. Now, intercooling. Now, intercooling efficiency may reduce 6.5 because we are taking away heat from the system. So, efficiency is reduced, but work output is increased by 10.2 percent reheat. In reheat also efficiency may not it is there is there is a misconception that if you do reheat, reheating in a turbine efficiency will increase. Efficiency I mean may not increase efficiency does not increase often it may increase some of the cases, but often it does not increase right, but definitely the output can be increased up to 24.5 percent. Now, 5 uh, this is regeneration, this is intercooling and this is reheat. Now, we will take combination of reheat plus regeneration. We will reheat the uh, turbine in in between and exhaust of the turbine will be used for heating the outlet of the compressor. In that case we will getting 66.7 percent of efficient improved efficiency and this is 24.5 percent. Now, intercooling and regeneration ok intercooling of comp compression during compression and regeneration and intercooling and regeneration it gives approximately 68 percent and 1 0 2 output becomes quite high it is almost double. This is 3 4 5 now 6 is reheat plus intercooling. Now, if you do reheating and intercooling the efficiency goes down by 18.2 percent but the work output is 34.7 percent announcement in our work output and the last one is all these three 1 plus 2 plus 3 here efficiency can be increased by 80 percent and output 34.7 percent. So, we can say that regeneration is the best process if you want to improve the efficiency of the turbine regeneration is the best process reheating the efficiency does not increase in fact the output you can increase by reheating and reheating can be done in a number of stages not only single stage it can be done in a number of stages. Now, we will discuss about the advantages of closed cycle as I said earlier there are two types of gas turbine cycles one is closed cycle one is open cycle. So, if we compare the performance of a closed cycle with an open cycle, the closed cycle has higher thermal efficiency. Why? Because if we again draw temperature entropy diagram T s <coughs> state 1 to state 2, state 3 to state 4, the entire this T s diagram can be shifted then because it is a closed cycle we can operate it on higher pressure right P 1 may not remain atmospheric it can be 2 times of atmospheric pressure because it is a closed loop right. So, for this reason we can the, uh, the uh, 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 enhancement in the thermal efficiency can be realized because it is working on the high pressure. So, a specific output not a specific output for the same output the size of the turbine can be reduced because the thermal efficiency is high first of all yes it is thermal efficiency is high it is implicit 
that for the same output as we can reduce the size of the turbine. It has better part load efficiency. Now, every machine including uh, say for example, scooter, motorcycle, car or that is reciprocating machine or rotary machine is designed for a particular load and that is known as a design load. Now, suppose this is the design load and at the design load, it has certain efficiency. right? Now, if we deviate from the design load, right? If we deviate from the design load means, suppose, suppose let us talk about a, a motorcycle. Motorcycle is designed for let us say 60 kilometer per hour on ideal road condition when you do not apply brake, the fuel consumption is 40 or I mean 80 kilometers per liter. But when you drive a motorcycle, you never realize 80 kilometers per liter because you always drive the machine on off design condition. You are sometimes you are in a crowded area, you are driving at 20 kilometers per hour, you are on highway, you are driving with 100 kilometers per hour, so and you often on and off you are applying brakes. So, this average is never realized. But those machines have very good uh, uh, part load efficiency. I mean, if you look at the part load efficiency of a reciprocating machine, it is something like this. So, even if you are not operating on a design load the efficiency much of this efficiency is not sacrificed. But if you look at the gas turbine, gas turbine air fuel ratio is 60 is to 1 so fuel air fuel ratio yes. In reciprocating machine diesel engine or petrol engine it is of the order of 10 or 15 or 20 right. But the off design performance of the gas turbine is something like this almost vertical. Suppose, so just you deviate from the uh, design condition, there is a sharp fall. These lines are almost vertical. There is a sharp fall in the efficiency of the engine, right? And this is one of the reason, this is one of the reason why these gas turbine engines are not used in automobiles. This is one of the reasons. There are several other reasons also, but this is one of the reasons, right? And in this closed cycle gas turbines, there is a good heat transmission we are using here. Fluid friction loss are less, less fluid friction losses, right. <coughs> no contamination is there, contamination is not there. So, a longer life of the gas turbine and the compressor blades, high output, <coughs> inexpensive and there is no loss of work media. These are the advantages of the closed turbine. There are certain disadvantages also, it is a dependent system. It is dependent system because cooling has to be done, a cooler has to be provided, right. So, it is not fit for say uh, aeronautic purpose. I mean you cannot apply this closed cycle gas turbine in an aeroplane. However, for marine application this can be very good because it is compact in size and for marine application you know in the sea a lot of plenty of water is available. So, cooling of gas is not a problem. <coughs> now, if you compare the gas turbine and steam turbine power plant, we have in India we have gas turbine power plants also. So, first of all no water supply is not required. For steam power plant much water is required, water is required for generating steam, water is makeup water is required, water is required for the condensers, for gas turbines much water is not required. In fact, there is no water requirement is nil. If you look at the cycle, water requirement is nil in, in, in gas turbine. So, it does not have condensing plant normally, if it is a open cycle, condensing plant is not required in steam turbine. It, a condenser is required in a steam turbine, a separate boiler house is required, right? He, and boiler and its accessories are required in the gas turbines, boilers are not required, only combustion chambers are required, and where combustion takes place at the atmospheric pressure, if it is an indirect type of thing. Even if the pressure, pressure is also not very high in gas turbines if you compare the pressure in the steam turbine. So, in a gas turbine, less components have to be designed. In a steam turbine, more components, more safety valves have to be provided, more components have to be designed. 
So, the maintenance is low, maintenance is low, they are all connected with each other. So, when less components have to be designed, maintenance part, so there is low maintenance. low maintenance uh, in the turbine and th the best part is it, it starts very quickly. I mean if you have to start the steam turbine you will have to inject water in the boiler and the boiler will light up and then this turbine will start. But here in the gas turbine you, the, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the start is very quick right. So, as emergency power plant also gas turbine power plants are used because immediately you can start the gas power, uh, power power plant. Cost is because there are less number of components, cost is less, <laughs> but there are certain disadvantages also. Uh, like uh, work ratio is less for I said earlier, I, we, when we compared the Rankine cycle with the gas turbine cycle, this Joule cycle, work ratio is less for a gas turbine power plant and air rate is quite high right and pa as I said earlier power load efficiency is very poor for the gas turbines. So, it limits the application of the gas turbine that is all for today thank you very much. <laughs>